Well, that was very good, but you know what was better? This fucking main event. Oh, my God. Claudio Castagnoli and Kanesuke Takeshita. They got two standing ovations in this match. Two. They deserved it. <laughs> and one was like three minutes in. Yeah. They did they like a spot them. that involved a couple of... Uh... It was it was literally power knuckle holds and monkey flips. Yeah. And people were standing ovations chanting, this is awesome. For a monkey flip. <laughs> yeah. That was an awesome monkey flip. <laughs> so, uh, well, he did monkey flip the hell out of that guy. That's true. This match just ruled. Um, <laughs> I'm watching that. I'm blown away because the whole point... The, the only reason Takeshita is on this show at all is because, theoretically, he is on excursion. He is here to learn how to work. Sounds like everyone else is on excursion working with him. <laughs> I think so. So they did have a four-man booth because they had Excalibur, Taz, <laughs> Regal is there because it's a Claudio match, and Caprice is there because it's a Ring of Honor match. And I dearly love all four of these dudes individually as commentators, but four men in one booth is too much. They were fighting for airtime, trying to get each to get a word did, in. Did you notice uh, Regal accidentally interrupted uh, Taz, and he said, I'm very sorry, Mr. Maniac. Yes. I always call him Mr. Maniac. Because Taz Die. Maniac. Yes. He was the Taz Maniac, yeah. That's right. Uh, Regal and Coleman both noting how wrestlers are typically trained to a to, to use holes in the opponent's left arm. So he put on the right arm to catch, the, catch them off guard. I thought that was awesome. Um, Regal it, had some interesting things, but also weird things. Like, he's got this new one where he goes, you know, the, the way to protect yourself from a pile driver is to turn your head to the side. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? What are you talking about? Well. Please explain this to me. It's better to have your head this way and have your neck bent than have, take it straight on the top of your head and take it Spinal compression. Well, I, I guess. Neither is good. Yeah. How about you don't... It's better to not get pile-driven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but technically, but technically... he didn't say... He says, like, turn it to the side. I think... Like an owl. I think he meant tilt. <laughs> yeah. He didn't say he, tilt, though. He said turn it to the side. He said turn. I think he meant to say tilt. Because turning, I don't think, would do a damn thing. That, I don't think, would happen at all. So, the match is great. Uh, uh, Claudio's got him grounded, and he's... For the a rare time for Takeshi on this trip, he's not the bigger, stronger man. He's he, uh, uh, Claudio's bigger. He's out grappling him. He's pa using power moves to slam him over and over again. So Takeshi's got to make his comeback by basically being a luchador. He's doing big giant dives with the ropes and running hither and yon all over the place and and and, and keeping Claudio off balance. And it, it's funny because Excalibur, this whole match was making references to El Generico, and. I, I forget what the connection was with uh, Takeshita, but he, you know, De Nerico and Claudio. It was, it was a kick in the corner. He goes, that was a hell of a kick. But even even before that. No, he's talking about the big flip dive. Maybe yeah, it's the flip dive. Reminiscent of uh, Maybe that brought it up. Generico. But he, he named out Generico several times, and that was before the hell of a kick and the blue thunder bomb and the turnbuckle DDT and the frog splash, and there was there was one other spot. I'm like, okay. Oh, it was Takeshita was his first match. Or, I'm sorry, Il Jericho was his first match. It was Takeshita's? Okay, that was, well, that, that's a reason to have it there. But that being said, I watched this, and he's doing all of Jericho's spots. He didn't do the turnbuckle brain buster, but he did do a turnbuckle DDT. And at that point, it occurred to me, okay, clearly, and I, and I don't know if Claudio talked to Excalibur about, Excalibur about this and told him what he was going to do, but clearly, Claudio had a match with Il Jericho at some point and used that as the template to put this one together because... It, it was Takeshita playing the part of El Generico, which he did great at. So we get the uh, no selling of suplexes and 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 lariats, and there's knee strikes and brain busters and Looks a discus. Like it's nine thirty six about right now. A discus elbow of death. Here comes the Wabash cannonball. <laughs> Claudio turned. Takeshita goes with a jumping knee. It's almost a v, v trigger, but Claudio caught him in midair and turned it into a Death Valley driver and I was going crazy and before you even say anything Taz is there to explain listen if you've never been in a ring you have no idea how hard that is to do and I'm like listen I was technically in a ring I well aware how hard that is to do and finally because it's a Ring of Honor match there this is how Ring of Honor matches usually end somebody gets an advantage and just dominates their phone puts them away Claudio gets the pop-up uppercut a bunch of the uh, Blackpool Combat Club elbows that everyone in the troop is doing now and finishes him off with a Ricola bomb. This was a tremendous wrestling match. What's his Takeshi's contractual status right about now? Is he available? Can we sign this guy already? You, you would think. Jiminy Christmas. I'd even advocate for WWE signing this guy. Now yeah. That, now that Vince is gone. Somebody get this guy. I'm sure all the DDT folks are furious, but I mean, come on. So let's make this Takeshi some money. This guy should, this guy should be rich. 
it was cool watching the fans actually pop for wrestling. Oh yeah, they weren't you know what I'm saying? They 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 weren't brawling. There wasn't blood. There wasn't high flying. It was just wrestling, and the fans were completely into it. And uh, this match was fantastic. Yeah, I thought Battle of the Belts three was a great great show. Just great, actually. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I very much enjoyed that one. And, uh, yeah. If only this had been Rampage, we could stop talking yeah. about it. But, alas, Sanda it was not. versus Lee stands on Lee's chest when she's down. Bangs her, uh, her on the apron. Pull, um, puts elbow on her chin through... Her out of the ring. You know, it doesn't really matter a lot in 2022, Granny, but uh, no. Lee, in fact, identifies as a man. <laughs> Legend time, versus woman. Perez. That was another NXT. Can you believe the little guy beat him? He beat Legend. Again, a little guy? It's now more... Roxanne Perez is a man? Yeah. Roxanne. No, no, these were two women. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, Granny. you got to be kidding me today. God. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.